We're going to talk about two-body force problems in this video. And uh, what I mean by two-body force problems is when one object is in contact with another object. And we haven't looked at uh, any problems like this in physics yet, so uh, that's what we're going to learn in this video. So let's go through uh, how to start off a problem like this. It says to draw the free body diagram for each block separately. So we have block A and block B, and so we'll draw them separately down here. If this is block A, um, let's draw the free body diagram for block A first. We know it's sitting on the ground, so um, we're going to have the force of gravity. It's sitting on the ground, so it's not accelerating in the up and down direction. So we know that there must be a force that the ground is putting on the block. We call that force the normal force. Um, and so that's the force that's straight up. Another force that we see here is there's a force applied and it's pointing to the right. So I'm going to draw that force right here and call that force applied. Okay, and when we push this block, if we push block A to the right, you're going to know uh, there's going to be another force that's caused between the ground and the block. Um, that's going to be called the force of friction. So I'm going to draw that one, force of friction. But there's also another force, and that's what we're going to learn in this video, is there's a force between the blocks. Um, so when you push block A, there's going to be another force pushing to the left on block A, and it's going to be caused by block B. And so we call this force that block B pushes on block A, we call that the force of B on A. And that's how you see it written in most um, physics textbooks, is you'll see a force a sub B of A. That just means the force that B is putting on block A. And so that's all the forces that are acting on block A, and so if we draw the free body diagram for block B now, draw block B over here. Again, we have the force of gravity that's going straight down, so the force of gravity. We have the normal force that's pointing up. Um, and, and now let's think about what's causing block B to move to the right. Um, and the answer to that is the force that block A puts on block B. And so I'm going to put that force right here, the force that block A puts on block B. And so it's really not the applied force anymore because the applied force is being applied to block A. And um, so I guess some of that force is being transferred and we'll call that the block or the force that A puts on block B and that's making it to go to the right. Now let's think about what's causing, uh, what force is causing block B, uh, what force would be going left. And in that case, there's only one force on block B that's going left, and that's the force of gravity. Or I mean, sorry, the force of friction. And that's the force that's caused between the block and the ground. There's not another block here, so that's the only force that's uh, causing block B to move to, or, or the force that's going to the left on block B. So anyway, um, that's how you set up these two-body force um, problem is to make a separate free body diagram for each block involved. If there was another block right here, um, we could call that block C, and you would set up and do another um, separate free body diagram. Let's do a problem where there's some actual numbers involved. Um, if we look here at this problem, it says using the diagram below, find the acceleration of the system and it tells us that the coefficient of friction is 0.3. And another question it wants is this, to find the force that A puts on B, and it wants us to find the force that B puts on A. So again, you always start um, by drawing a free body diagram separately um, for all blocks involved. So this is going to be block A, and it's it was 80 kilograms. And so when we do the force of gravity, um, that's 80, so 80 times 9.8, and I'm getting that's equal to 784 newtons. We know that, that block A is not accelerating in the up and down direction, so this object has got to have a normal force that's equal 
but opposite direction um, from the force of gravity. So the normal force is going to be equal to 784 newtons as well. All right, and if you think back, um, this 800 newton force is being applied to block A and it's going to the right. So I'm going to draw that applied force right here. So force applied. And that was 800 newtons. Okay. And then there's going to be two forces on block A that are pointing to the left. That will be uh, the force of friction that block A experiences with the ground right here. And we can find that the force of friction is, is, is uh, the coefficient of friction is 0.3. So we're going to take 0.3 and times that by the normal force of 784. And I'm getting that's equal to uh, 235.2 newtons. Okay, and then there's one more force that's pointing to the left on block A, and that would be the force that block B puts on block A. So draw that force and call it the force that A, oh, I'm sorry, um, the force that B puts on block A. So that's the force that B puts on block A and it's going to the left. And we don't know that force yet, we'll, we'll be able to find it later. Um, and so that's all the forces that we know for block A. So let's draw the free body diagram for block B and find all the forces that are acting on it. Okay, so this is block B and it was 150 uh, kilograms. So the force of gravity straight down, 150 times 9.8. And that's equal to, this is the force of gravity. And that's equal to 1,400, oops, uh, 1,470 newtons. And we know that it's not accelerating up and down, so again, the normal force has got to be equal to that, so 1,470 newtons as well. Okay. And now let's look at the forces that are going to the left and right on block B. We know that it's being pushed by block A, so I'm going to call that force the force that A puts on block B. And we don't know that force yet, we'll be able to find it later. We do know that uh, there's a force that's stopping the motion of block B, and that's called the force of friction. And that's equal to mu, which is 0.3, times your normal force was 1470. So 3 times 1470. And that's equal to 441 newtons. Okay, when you get to this point, you fill down all the magnitudes of all the forces that you have. Um, we have to we have to go back and, and find out what it's asking for. It says on number one, find the acceleration of the system. Whenever you see acceleration in these force problems, you should think of force net is equal to ma. And this is Newton's second law. If there is a net force, there will be an acceleration. So to find the net force on this system, I'm going to call everything to the right, I'm going to call that positive, and everything to the left, I'm going to call that negative. So there's really just one force that's going to the right. Um, I'll circle that. And that's the applied force of 800 Newtons. We don't know the force of A on B, but if you look here, the force of A on B is this force between block A and B. That's going to be equal but opposite the force of B on A. So they're really going to cancel out anyway. If we, if we were to factor them in the net force, they would cancel each other out. So I'm going to leave those for a second. And uh, so the net force, everything to the right is positive. So I'm going to say that's 800. So 800. And now I've got to look at what's going to, um, now let's look at what's going to the left. The forces that we know that are going to the left are the force of friction. And we found the magnitude of that force in each case. And so to find the net force, you take everything that's to the right, which is positive, and then you subtract off everything that's going the opposite direction. So that uh, 
235 minus 235.2 and we've also got to subtract off the friction from block B which was 441 and that will give us our net force and that is going to be equal to the system's mass so if we take 80 and add that to 150 you have to add both of the blocks because they're both involved in the system so 80 plus 150 is equal to 230 230 that will be your mass and the acceleration is what we are solving for so I'm going to call that A and now we have an equation here with just one unknown so we can solve for that so if we take 800 subtract 235.2 and subtract 441 I'm getting this number so 123.8 is equal to 230 times A and so now we have uh, simplified the equation a little bit we still have our missing our unknown right here to uh, isolate the acceleration we're going to divide each side of this equation by 230 on this side it will cancel out and so 123.8 divided by 230 will give us our acceleration and I'm finding that the acceleration here is equal to 0 0.54 and acceleration is always measured in meters per second squared so I'm going to circle that. That's the acceleration of the system. So if you were to push on this, these two blocks with 800 newtons of force, they would accelerate at 0 0.54 meters per second squared. Okay, so that's the answer to number one. So we've answered that, pro that question. On number two, it says find the force that block A puts on block B. So the force of A on B. So what I'm looking for here is what this force will be. And now that I have the acceleration of the system, I can, uh, I can use Newton's second law on block B specifically to help solve for this force. So force net is equal to MA. And remember I said everything to the right is positive. So I'm going to call force that A puts on B positive. And I'm going to subtract off everything that's going to the left because that was negative. So minus 441, and that's going to be equal to the object's mass, which is 150, and um, times the acceleration. So the acceleration we just found, um, this, the acceleration of the system, and that is 0 0.54. Okay, so now we have an equation with just one unknown. You take 150 times it by 0.54, that's 81. And so 81, so the force that A puts on B minus 441 is equal to 81. So to get the force of A on B by, by itself, we will add 441 to each side. So plus 441. And the force that A puts on B is equal to 522 newtons. Okay. And so um, if we fill in this number here, 522 newtons, if we look at this other force, uh, so we found number two, let's look at number three. It says find the force that B puts on A, the force that B puts on A. And we could go through again and solve um, using Newton's second law with just block A, solve for the force that B puts on A. And we could do that, um, but Newton's third law says that for every force, or for every action, there's an equal but opposite reaction. And so this 522 Newtons of force that A is putting on B is going to be returned because there's an equal but opposite force here, according to Newton's third law. So the force that B puts on A is going to be a minus 500 and 22 newtons of force. And you could go through and use Newton's second law to prove that, but uh, I don't have space here, and, and so I'll save that. But 
So hopefully that helps you with these two body force problems. What I've got for you um, for your video physics assignment is two questions that are very similar to the ones that uh, we just went through in this video. So if you uh, come across any problems or you forget a little bit, remember you can scroll through the, the video, rewind it, and, uh, and go over it again. If you still have questions, remember I'm always available to help, so come in, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll solve it together. But uh, yeah, there's two questions. I'll scroll through them slowly, and good luck.